Blog Talk Radio. Hello out there, everybody. This is David Domzowski, founder of the Financial Bin and host of Financial Bin Radio. Before I introduce you to our guest tonight, let me remind you about Entrepreneur Intervention, Triumphs and Failures of Entrepreneurs. The book debuted in November 2011, and so far we've really received some great feedback. We're looking to get Entrepreneur Intervention into colleges and universities as part of their curriculum, and we'll update you on that at a later date. You can pick up your copy for just 99 cents on Apple's iBookstore, on Kindle, on Nook, and now on Sony Reader. It's also available in paperback at Amazon and CreateSpace. Go to financialbin.com and click on the book section at the very top next to the login button for more information. Now let me introduce you to our guest tonight. His name is Ed O'Boyle. Ed is the founder and CEO of PhotoBridge, a digital photo scanning service based in West Berlin, New Jersey. Please join me in welcoming Ed to the program. And Ed, thank you for joining us tonight. I really appreciate it. Well, thanks for having me, David. I appreciate uh, being on with you. It's no problem at all. It's all, it's our pleasure. So uh, let's get right into it. Uh, can I can can you give the listeners a brief description of what you were doing uh, prior to starting PhotoBridge? Sure, sure, David. Um, I had a a fairly uh, long career in uh, management consulting. Um, I started my career. Um, uh, with Price Waterhouse um, and uh, carried through with Price Waterhouse uh, when the firm, when their management consulting division became uh, Price Waterhouse Coopers uh, Management Consulting. Uh, and then around 2002, the firm was uh, the consulting division in the wake of the Enron scandal was spun off to uh, IBM. And IBM picked up uh, the consulting business of um, PricewaterhouseCoopers. Um, essentially, over the years, I worked uh, for a number of uh, media and entertainment uh, companies, um, also uh, some large telecom companies. And my area of uh, expertise was in um, process innovation. We worked on a lot of large technology integration projects, um, strategic sourcing for corporate clients, operational strategy, and really kind of went across a broad uh, functional area in our uh, clients, um, for anywhere from finance, uh, marketing, HR, and, and um, various other functional areas and companies. So I, I came from kind of a traditional corporate um, uh, experience and uh, spent many years in consulting and really looked at consulting as as kind of uh, somewhere in between entrepreneurship and, and a corporate environment. So that's... Yeah, that's it, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so that's basically my background. Well, it, it's funny that you mentioned uh, PwC because uh, for, for a little while there, I worked for KPMG, so I, I know what the big four environment is all about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so... You know, I guess so. Uh, you were you were a corporate corporate guy for a little while there. So, what led you to becoming an entrepreneur and then starting PhotoBridge? Well, I've always had um, kind of uh, the desire to uh, create businesses. I mean, what what fascinated me was what made uh, businesses tick, and I think that's what kept me interested in consulting for so long. Um, so, I've always had kind of a um, a streak for. Uh, looking at how businesses develop, how new businesses are created, and um, moving moving uh, new projects forward. So kind of an independent streak uh, was one of the factors that led me to um, to uh, create PhotoBridge. Um, I also, I think uh, in about 2006, I had a close friend who had a death in the family, and they knew that I was into uh, imaging and photography, and they asked me um, how to solve their problem, which was how did they uh, digitally archive uh, their their family's collection of um, images and photos. And I thought, uh, well, there had to be a lot of businesses involved in that, and I did uh, some quick research. And certainly enough, there were some, some services out there, but what I saw was very fragmented and fractured, and, and the offerings... Uh, didn't really look like um, um, they hung together too well, and I, I kind of um, kept that idea and said to myself, "Well, well, there's a there's an area where I think uh, it looks like there might be a business opportunity. Plus, I have a, a a passion for photography and imaging, and that's something when the time comes, I would certainly consider looking uh, further into that." Um, 
so so that was really the reason I I came to a point uh with IBM where um I had a um a retention bonus situation. I think the timing was right for me. A couple things came together at the same time. It was kind of my awareness of the space. Um I spent probably a year and a half following the market and doing research and then uh at a certain point of time um decided that it was time for me to kind of pursue my dreams and start my own business. Well, so so tell us about the company. How how, did, how does it all work? What what makes Photobridge Photobridge? Photobridge is um our our whole business is helping people to preserve um their memories. I mean, people who are of my age, I'm at the tail end of the uh baby boomer generation. Um, a lot of them have large collections of, um, of images and content that is kind of trapped in old media. So if uh, you remember, you know, the old 35-millimeter slides, a lot of people have uh, Super 8 uh, movies. Um, there's a lot of content out there that, um, you know, is, is, is going to face the ravages of time eventually, and people really value that. Um, their their memories. So what they want to do is obviously um, preserve it digitally. Um, what we do is we offer um, flat rate conversion packages, and people um, they either hear from us through word of mouth or they discover us through the internet, um, and um, they determine that they want to um, uh, save their their memories, and they find us on the internet. Uh, they do their research. Um, obviously, with the Internet, it's it's very transparent. Um, there is some competition in the space, so people look at uh, what we offer vis-a-vis -vis our, our competitors, what our pricing is. We really compete on uh, a number of dimensions. We compete on quality, speed, price, uh, trust, obviously, brand and reputation. And trust is a big thing for our customers and the overall customer experience. So, um, that's generally how it works. People determine that they're, they're in the market for the service. They find us. They vet our services, our reputation, our brand. And then if they decide to do business with us, they place an order online. Um, they collect their material. Um, they ship it to us um, through a shipper, obviously, that has um, uh, secure shipping, so real-time tracking, FedEx, uh, UPS, um, we accept all of the uh, media at our facility in West Berlin, New Jersey. Um, we, uh, we prepare it. We digitize it. We um, enhance the images to get them uh, to a quality that is, um, is the highest possible with the media that we have uh, and obviously competes uh, uh, well against uh, people who are providing similar services. Uh, we then go through a fulfillment process where we uh, deliver digital images either on a, a DVD, uh, we can upload them online, or we can provide uh, media and other media um, like a mobile drive for people to, to use. Um, and we also have various options on those packages. So there are products that are associated with the service. Sometimes uh, people find it helpful to have a physical index print of what we've digitized for them, and if they elect to do that, we, we produce that here as well, and we um, uh, create that. So we fulfill the orders, and then we, we ship it back to our customers. So we're, we, we serve a national um, audience, and, and although we don't focus on international, we do, so, do some international business as well. Um, and uh, that's basically the cycle of uh, how we fulfill customer orders. So you guys really are pretty much a one-stop shop. I mean, pretty much in terms of digitizing a photograph, you know, I, I come to PhotoBridge and pretty much all my needs are met, correct? That's correct. And it's, it's, uh, it's, it's photographic prints, um, slides, uh, primarily 35-millimeter slides, uh, negatives, um, standard 35-millimeter negatives, and also um, different format negatives. Um, as I said before, 8-millimeter uh, film, 16-millimeter film, and also um, uh, the various incarnations of videotape. Uh, that's just amazing. I mean, I mean, you know, nowadays, I mean, 
you, you can't be putting your photos in just like a you know a three ring binder somewhere. You got to be able to hold on to it some somehow and uh, you know back it up too. <laughs> so I mean, it's right. fan, well, it's just you know, a fantastic as, as service. As we know, there's an explosion of digital imaging on the internet, which is is which is right. largely driven by what what I call born digital images. So images you take on your cell phone, but not mm -hmm. necessarily old images. But there is a knock on effect when people start to see what they can do with born digital images. Um, right. A lot of people of a certain age say, well, "Hey, wait a minute! There's there's a there's a ton of images that I have that are really the most you know valuable, the most emotive images I have. Wouldn't it be great to digitize them, not only to save them, back them up, but also share them online as well?" So that, so we're seeing a lot of people become aware of the digital imaging space, and then harken back to what they have, and then go find their stuff and look for a service to convert it to, di to digital, and that's. That's hopefully when they hear about us. That, that's fantastic. It really is. Uh, now, Ed, Ed, can you can you kind of tell us a little bit about some of your clients and the work you've done for them? I, you know, I noticed uh, on your website some big names out there, like the Indiana, Indianapolis Colts and and uh, USA Hockey, even. Yeah, we um, uh, we envisioned the business uh, when we started as primarily a uh, consumer business, but also knew that there were large institutions and also professional photographers that would that would need the service as well. Um, we've really focused on, on the consumer channel. We've also envisioned a uh, more formal uh, B2B channel where we market directly to, uh, say, universities, hospitals, um, and, and other organizations that would have historical so societies that would have large collections that needed to be um, converted. Um, but, yeah, you mentioned the, the cults. Um, a, a lot of those organizations right now found us through the same means that our uh, consumers have found us. So they've, they've Googled the service and they found us. Um, the cults we've done, um, uh, I think, literally thousands of slides for them that were of uh, players and their organization and their cheerleaders from the 1970s and 80s. And I believe the cults, the organization of the cults is going to use that for some special projects coming up. So so we might see some of that, um, uh, I don't know, as, as we get closer to the Super Bowl. Um, USA Hockey uh, is the, um, uh, the organization um, for um, internationally that represents hockey, and not only um, uh, the Olympic Hockey Committee, but but um, uh, it promotes uh, the, obviously the sport of hockey uh, throughout the United States. The job we did for them was about 30,000 uh, images, and it consisted of uh, print slides and negatives, and we digitally converted um, all of those for them. Um, we've also had some uh, people of note that um, early on found us and used us and um, uh, we're happy to say uh, helped us um, move forward and spread the word. Uh, one of those people is um, John Landau, who is a Academy Award winning uh, director out in Hollywood. Um, he has, has told us that he benchmarked us against some competitors, found us to have the best and most valuable service, and uh, decided to use us for his uh, personal family collection, which included thousands of prints um, that dated all the way back um, to the early 1900s of his of his family. Um, oh, wow. We also have um, uh, professional photographers, as I mentioned, um, uh, artists, um, collectors, um, uh, and and several other. I think uh, on our website we have um, a listing of of some of the uh, more notable clients we've been able to get so far. Well, between the Colts and uh, and having Hollywood up there, there's just some pretty ringing endorsements. <laughs> yeah, it, it uh, helps. Our, our business is, yeah. is uh, driven a lot by word of mouth, um, and as we mentioned before, this is a it's a trust relationship. This is very valuable personal uh, material that people have to trust um, the person who is is receiving that to to um, safeguard. And um, so, yeah, that, that's been a big help to be able to uh, get clients such as those. So, so Ed, kind of, kind of building off of that, what, what are your plans for this year and beyond? You know, maybe, I don't know, maybe next one to five years, where do you see PhotoBridge going? 
Well, obviously, we would we would like to continue to um, grow the business. Um, I think, you know, we're right now um, just under four years old, and um, we're a um, bootstrapped operation. We're, we're very much um, customer finance, so we've been able to grow because we've been able to spread the word and increasing increase our customer base on a on a regular basis. So what we'd like to do is continue to expand our capacity and operations. Um, we would like to also spend some time on strategic relationships, so reseller relationships, which we really haven't done to date. Um, we would like to uh, obviously grow our marketing and PR team. Um, this is very much an awareness business. Um, everybody uh, or most families um, have collections that, that will eventually need to be uh, converted and digitized. So, um, and we have, uh, especially with the traction we've gotten so far, um, we've been able to, as people become aware of us, um, to, to uh, very much tell our story and, and make them aware that this is a project they should be doing. Um, uh, so we'd like to uh, work on, on awareness, and we'd also like to, um, as I mentioned before, further develop the kind of uh, B2B uh, infrastructure um, where we have a more formal uh, channel uh, to um, uh, the organizations and the larger institutions that provide uh, opportunities for um, uh, larger accounts and, and more business. Uh, that that's great. That's definitely a, a focus and a, a fantastic focus for the next several years. And you know, I, I got to say, there's some, something to to be said to uh, you know bootstrap a business these days. It seems like you know everyone's looking for that quick buck in venture capital or or angel investing. And you know, so it's nice to hear a, a business that's that's customer financed, as you as you explained. So that I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, when, you know, we when we started, we we wanted to spend time on getting customers and getting traction and at the point where we needed expansion capital we would we would go find that and i think it's it's especially in today's market if you have a business that is getting some traction and you have some customers uh it's sometimes better to wait than to just immediately go out and pitch your idea to to investors it's a, it's sure. a tougher road to hoe absolutely no i could i couldn't agree more uh, now, now kind of transitioning a little bit uh, you know, Ed, what's what's the biggest mistake that you've made in your business uh, thus far? And you, you can you know you can go back to other ventures maybe that you've uh, that you've tried as well. And how did how did you overcome that? Um, well, I'm I'm thinking of Photobridge, and I, you know the the one thing that um, I think we discounted in the very beginning, and it kind of dovetails into my prior comment about us being a, a business that's, whose success is very very much based on, on broader awareness, is we discounted um, the value of PR. Um, and uh, we kind of had the uh, impression that, um, you know, if we did a good job for our customers and our customers were recommending us and we were getting good traction, we were getting word of mouth, that um, uh, that awareness would naturally gravitate towards us, and it does to a certain extent. But we were fortunate enough to get some um, kind of ad hoc PR, I guess, um, uh, around a year and a half ago um, uh, in national magazines, and we were we were kind of floored by the um, the reaction we got and and the. Uh, effect on on the business. I mean, essentially, we're in a uh, uh, a business where there's a certain cost associated with acquiring a customer. So, um, I, I think we the mistake we made early on was discounting the ability for uh, public relations and getting some real public relations talent involved um, uh, could have an uh, impact on our on our business. So. You know, the, what we've learned from that is that um, we're, we're going to focus more on on getting attention and getting uh, some additional PR. The, the thing that we're learning about PR is that uh, oftentimes uh, uh, the hardest thing to get is that initial kind of um, uh, coverage. And once you have that, and once you have some some substantial national names that have looked at you and reviewed you or have recommended you or have written an article about you, it's easier to get those subsequent ones. But uh, it's a challenge, and I think uh, 
we're now on the track where we're focusing a little bit more on it. Ed, Ed, who 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 mentored you when you first started, and and who do you consult today? I think you know it, it's something that uh, I think sometimes is overlooked in terms in the entrepreneurial world. Some people just want to kind of dive in and don't really want to look for guidance. So, wh- where did you look for guidance when you first uh, started PhotoBridge? Wow, I looked everywhere. Um, I didn't I didn't have necessarily a, a particular individual that I went to. Um, I think in in today's kind of connected internet world, there are a tremendous amount of resources for people who have ideas, who are uh, who are thinking about starting businesses, um, and, um, you know, there's uh, what I did was I just, uh, from uh, very much from the consulting mindset, which is a continuous kind of learning um, um, mindset, is to just, you know, devour all the information I could get from all all the um, uh, quality uh, sources that I could find. So, in the startup community, in the business community, in the imaging community, um, looking for the right um, kind of white papers, the right blogs, the right uh, uh, forms, the right um, books, um, and the right people to follow in the spaces. I think I, I was able to uh, learn fairly quick. And also, um, I think because I've had a number of years in consulting, was learned from other people's experience. I think it's sometimes difficult when you're 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 very passionate about an idea to slow down and think about how you're going to approach it. Um, so I, I think that you know the temperament to be able to you know um, uh, study other people's situations and and pull lessons from that is is a big thing. Um, you know, my uh, uh, about a year and a half into PhotoBridge, my wife left uh, her career as a as a teacher to join us because we were getting some traction. And you know, we are free with one another um, as far as supporting one another and what we're doing, and uh, and being very honest and critiquing one another. So I'd say on a daily basis, it's it's my wife Julie and I, um, kind of on a longer term basis. And of course, in the consulting. World, I worked for uh, and worked with some some uh, very very strong leaders, and um, a lot of that translates, I think, into uh, more entrepreneurial uh, pursuits. You know, if you can effectively manage a million dollar uh, you know project for a Fortune 500 company, uh, chances are you you know you've learned a, a bit that can apply to you know a million dollar startup company. Oh, that, definitely. I, I could definitely see how, how that would work out. Now, now, Ed, to to kind of wrap up here, last question I, I have for you. You mentioned some of the lessons that you've learned. What is one piece of advice you can pass on to Generation Y entrepreneurs out there, people who are aspiring to do, uh, you know, to to start their own company? I think um, there are a number of things. Um, I think one of the, uh, in my experience, um, is don't wait, act now. If you have if you have an idea, if you're creative and passionate about it, um, act now, fail fast, learn fast, and move forward. There's never been a time where um, it's been kind of easier or less uh, capital intensive to follow up um, and, and try and start something. Um, and a lot of times people, you know, they, they can get – analysis paralysis, and um, they can uh, go for long periods of time thinking about something. Um, uh, I think it, the best advice is if you have an idea, go forward with it, try it, try to learn as you go, uh, be very agile and be able to change direction and take input from all sources. And, and, and today there's a, a tremendous amount of uh, sources for input. In fact, maybe that's the challenge today, that there's so much information and so much assistance out there that you need to develop a good good filter to make sure that what you're internalizing is relevant to what, what you're doing. So uh, I would say, you know, don't wait. <laughs> Start to act. <laughs> That, absolutely. That, that's that's some great advice there, Ed. I I really appreciate your time, and I I really appreciate you coming on the program. It, it's been it's been wonderful. Well, thank you, David. I appreciate your interest in PhotoBridge. Thank you. No problem at all. Take care. Take care. Bye bye. 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 Okay, that was Ed O'Boyle from PhotoBridge.com. You can also visit him 
on Twitter at Ed Ed O'Boyle on Twitter at Ed O'Boyle, all one word, no hyphen for the O in between the O or the B, and also at PhotoBridge on Twitter as well. I want to thank you for joining us tonight, and remember, please take a look at PhotoBridge. Please please check them out for all your digital photo needs, and also you know remember remember entrepreneur intervention. Uh, Tribes and Failures of Entrepreneurs, it's available for your e-readers, for your iPad, for your Nook, for your Kindle, and for your Sony Reader. And also, if you still like the paperback, there's still plenty of people out there that do. Uh, it's a little bit more than the, than the 99 cents that you'll have on your e-readers. Just 9.99, though. Great read. You'll really learn a lot. Please do yourself a favor this new year and and learn from some tw- learn from 28 remarkable individuals. I want to thank you for joining us. And uh, please look for us next week. Uh, I will give you more details as to who who will be on the program. Uh, I want to thank you. This is David Domzowski signing off. I'm the founder of the Financial Bin and host of Financial Bin Radio. Take care until next time.